while spatial analysis is extremely important and really proliferates and uh, facilitates analysis above and beyond your, your statistical and inferential analysis, one of the most important skills that you'll need is how to turn a spatial standalone table data into spatial data that we can do spatial analysis, clustering, or whatnot with. And so I've got a couple of examples of some tables that I, I've created and found off the internet that I thought were interesting. Here's a couple of tables here, and then we'll focus particularly on the spatial join, which will be the focus of this short talk. I have something here called the uh, Durham Police Department Crime taken from the DPD website. And I brought this into a GIS and queried it out. And these are all the crimes that have occurred in the year 2021 at the time of this recording. And you can see the date, incident ID, the type of crime that we are looking at called charge description, and an address or a block of the address. Now I want to turn this into GIS. And this is Turning, turned into GIS using a process called geocoding. We do geocoding all the time with our phones. And we type an address and a little blue dot pops up on our phone that tells us where it is. And it's a, it's a more convoluted process than, than what we, that, than what we uh, know or appreciate about it. But doing this for a couple of thousand records takes a little bit of time. And it takes a little bit of preparation. But that's called geocoding. That's the focus for another lecture. And then I have another one here that I've taken from the North Carolina Department, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, NOAA Climate Climate Prediction Center, where I have latitude, longitude, I have the amount, and this is the maximum air temperature taken on uh, April the 17th, 2021. And I can right mouse click and click on display XY data and highlight these uh, for the entire United States because you see that I have 5,670 individual stations here. And so I can display these stations and 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 attribute these uh, appropriately. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is I'm off the uh, went to the uh, North Carolina State Demographer, and I found a, a really neat table here that looks at percent population change between April 2010 and July 2020. And you can see I downloaded the, downloaded these into Excel. And I converted this to a CSV file and brought this CSV file into ArcGIS. There's some reasons why I don't like working with Excel in ArcGIS. A couple of the reasons that I'll name real briefly is that you have the multiple sheets or tabs in Excel. And sometimes the naming conventions of those with the dollar sign are hard to reconcile with ArcGIS. The other thing is that a lot of times if you see numbers like uh, FIPS codes, uh, FIPS codes or say zip codes, they're automatically going to treat those as numbers when in reality we want to treat those as text. So we have to do an extra process, extra step, especially after we bring it into ArcGIS called typecasting. And so I'll convert it to a CSV and, you know, still reconcile these issues. I'll talk later about a tutorial on reconciling the join because you have a number of issues here with the, the join that we run into from time to time. Now, the one neat thing that we have here is that I found this off the North Carolina demographic website and there's tons and tons of data that you can bring in. You can save it as an HTML, there could be PDFs, or any format, and we want to turn it into something that looks like this, a table. So we have 100 records here. These 100 records represent one for each of the 100 counties. And you notice this symbol right here. When I open it up in ArcGIS in the table of contents, this means this is a standalone table. And it says right here it's a standalone table, meaning that it's not attached to points, lines, and polygons. And it's described using a number of different attributes here. So I have a county, estimates, uh, the number, the percent. I'm going to map the percent because I have the births, the deaths, the natural increase where people in these areas in negative numbers are actually counties where more people died than were born. And then we have net migration because we know from human geography or intro to geography, population is a function of people being born, people dying, people coming to your place, and people leaving your place. And this is at the county level for North Carolina. This is really neat data. So I downloaded this Excel. I put it into a format. Sometimes you'll see in Excel, there might be some other junky, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, junk up here, up at the top of the Excel that I need to get rid of or anything down at the bottom that have totals because essentially what I want here is a one-to-one -one relationship. One of these records equate to one of these counties. And I do have that in, the, in that instance. 
I've worked with instances where we're looking at homeless, homelessness data or school achievement rates or things like that where you might not necessarily have a one-to-one -one relationship so you can map what you have and then everything that you don't have you can put in gray that says no data or something like that. And those are some of the challenges and, and part of the fun of working with real world data that it may not necessarily be available. So with that being said, I have a neat GIS data layer and for now I'm going to turn off my zip code level data because I don't really care too much about this. So what I'm looking at here, my NC counties, they're represented as polygons right here. And you can see in this case I have um, made them a you know, hollow symbol essentially. But And if I right mouse click on counties and open the attribute table, you can see the counties. So I have a file here, or I have a field here called name, I have a field here called county. And here, this is my GIS data layer. So for Alamance County, I've highlighted Alamance County in my attribute table. It's highlighted in the map. So you can see that one-to-one -one relationship. And you can see the population in 2010, population in 2013. I've got some race, ethnicity, uh, gender, gender or sex, and uh, age demographics highlighted throughout here. And I can attribute these however I want, but that's not the focus of this particular talk. My particular talk is I want to run something called the spatial join, where essentially I'm going to add this table to the end of counties. Because if I click on counties and go to appearance and click on symbology, I can group these. I can symbolize these. And I can map the median age. So I can look at counties which are younger versus counties which are older. And so these are your younger counties versus your older counties where, where younger people live versus older, you know, where older people live using different uh, schemes. And in class, we talk about natural breaks versus quantile. I'm a big quantile person here. And so you can see these, this map here that shows where the, the younger people are versus the older people. Now, I want to do the same thing, but I want to map the data sitting in this county growth. I want to look at the you know percent change between 2010 and 2020. Now, I don't want to map data that's already sitting in this county. And essentially what I did was I just went and mapped this column right here. So I went and mapped this column called median age. And then you can see what it looks like on the map. So you can see Onslow County, Watauga County, Jackson County out where Western Carolina is, Mecklenburg County, Union County are all low. And areas with military res uh, military installations and uh, cities and college campuses are all significantly lower while other regions uh, start to be higher. But what I want to do is I want to add this table to the end of this table. So instead of me mapping median age, I can map this. And this is what we call a join. Okay? In particular, it's called the tabular join. So I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to go to joins and relates and click add join. Now we've got this dialog here. Okay, and I always try to articulate wherever there's, we've got drop downs and folders, there's more of a chance of us screwing something up. Okay, so we need to be really prudent about this. Okay, so our input table is NC counties. Our join field name is called name because remember we had this field here called name. So in one field, it's called Alamance. Here it's Alamance, but the name of the field is called county. And you notice it says Alamance and it's in proper form. Here it's Alamance in proper form because remember, computers are stupid. Okay, they're not going to understand it all capitalized versus all lowercase. Okay, the next thing I have is county growth and then county. Okay, and keep all targets. So I'm going to validate the join, make sure it runs. It says it's not indexed, and that's okay. And I don't see anything in red here. Okay, so that typically is a good thing. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to run it. So now what happened? Okay, I'm going to go to NC counties. I'm going to go all the way to the right. Now what do we see here? We basically added that attribute this that standalone table to our attribute table. So now when I go to symbology, graduated colors, instead of median age, I can go all the way down and I can look at percent increase. And so now we can look at the values and look at the counties that have the highest percent increase versus the highest uh, percent decrease. 
And so just based on this you know, legend right here, and I'll X out of this and make this a little bit bigger. So now you can see these areas in this light green here are losing people. These areas in uh, this darkest green or blue or whatever you want to call it are increasing in people. So you can see the spatial relationships with those. So now I've got a brand new value. Now a couple tips and tricks that we can do, and what I like to do is I can export this and make a brand new feature class that has these new values. Or another thing that I can do, which we'll talk about later, is that I can right mouse click or, or go to fields. I can add a brand new field to counties and just calculate the one value in. So instead of me importing all of these individual fields, since I only want one of these fields, I can calculate it into my NC County's attribute table so I don't have to deal with anything. So that I can go back later and under my joins and relates, now I can remove all those joins. And now I've gone back and removed those particular joins. Then I can go back to appearance, symbology, and go to my single symbol. And then there I am. And so this is what we call the tabular join. Essentially, this tabular join is we add a standalone table to an attribute table using something called the key. And these keys need to be unique and non-repeating. So if I had something like Alexander, well, there might be lots of Alexander counties across the United States, but there's only one Alexander County in North Carolina. So a more appropriate, you'll see here I have FIPS codes, and FIPS codes are unique across the entire country, but you notice here for North Carolina, we don't have a FIPS code. So we need to be clever and creative when we figure out these keys and, and whatnot. But here I have name goes to county, and all we did was just add there. That's what we call the, the tabular join.